Hello, welcome back to Learn Economy. And today we are going to discuss the idea of recurring theory of rent. Let's get started. We could see that the quantity of land that is available here in our economy or in the world economy, this is something which is limited. And when we say it is limited, what we mean is it is scarce. So scarcity is one identified to be one of the important problem with respect to land. And this would get reflected in the productiveness of land as well as the quality of land. And when we say quality, what we mean here is the differences in the fertility. So differences in quality means differences in fertility. What happens in the Ricardian theory is that, as per Ricardo, when the superior land, when the most superior land is not able to support the increasing population, then what we have to do is that we have to make use of the inferior lands to produce goods through cultivation. We have to bring these inferior lands also into cultivation. So this is needed for cultivation. And as per Ricardo, rent would come as a result of the differences in the productivity of different lands. This would happen as a result of the differences in fertility. Differences in fertility, this would get reflected in the differences in productivity. The ability of the land to give output. That is, show, that is what shows its productiveness or productivity. And as per Ricardo, that particular portion of earth which is paid to the landlord for the original and indestructible powers of soil, this is what is rent. So you could see that the powers of soil is original as well as indestructible. For using these powers of soil, what we have to do is that we have to pay that portion of the produce of earth to the landlord, some portion. And it is actually a surplus that would be enjoyed uh, by the super marginal land, the best land and this is something that would be happening over the marginal land and as a result of something you call as the diminishing returns because when you use land, when you use the very same land for cultivation, what happens is that the returns that you get from land go on diminishing and that is what we can consider in the name of diminishing returns. That is what the law of diminishing returns also says. By saying that, let's come to the assumptions of the theory. Uh, Ricardo assumed that the land is fixed. As I told you, it is limited or it is scarce. Then he assumes that land is used for the production of corn and the working force in agriculture helps in determining the distribution in the industry. So this is something that we uh, can deal when it comes to the distribution theory of Ricardo. But right now we are not considering this. We are just considering land as a production. Land is used for the production of some corn or some food grain. Now, as I have told you in the beginning, law of diminishing return operates on land. When you use the very same plot of land for the cultivation of some crops again and again, the returns that you get from the land the successive returns, what happens is that the successive returns goes on diminishing. Successive returns from land, it go on diminishing. Now, also he assumes that, Ricardo assumes that the cost of production for each land is equal. With that, we, are, we can move on to the theory of Ricardo. So as per Ricardo, there are four grades of land. Grade A, Grade B, Grade C and Grade D. Here we could see that Grade A is the best land. Or oh, This is the best fertile land. This is what we assume. And Grade D land is the least fertile. So least fertile fertile land okay so as per uh, the fertility of land we can order it as a having more fertility then b has fertility then c has fertility and least fertile is d so what happens here is that initially we are bringing a into cultivation so whenever we bring a into cultivation it gives something called 50 units 
50 units of output is given by A. It can be 50 kilograms or 50 tons or whatever. Anyway, it is 15 unit, 50 units. So, for some time, this 50 units of output could, uh, could be able to satisfy the needs and wants of the existing population. But after some point of time, what we could see is that the population would be increasing. And for the very same reason, this 50 units of output won't be sufficient enough to cater to the needs and wants of the entire population. If that would be the situation, as a result of increase in population and as a result of increase in the demand for corn, what you do here is that you will be bringing grade B land into cultivation and when you bring grade B land into cultivation remember I told you that B is the second fertile land or it is the second best land here the output it gives us 35 units A was having this is output of B and 50 units was the output of A you could see that this is more and this is comparatively lesser so further increase in population will lead more and more inferior land to be taken for cultivation. And this is what gives rise to a situation like this. As I told you, initially A was having 50 as its output. Now, Here we could see that the rent is something that is arising as a result of scarcity of land and also it happens as a result of unequal fertility. We assume that the cost of production here is same for all the lands as per the assumption and this is equal to 50. Okay, now let's consider uh, the distribution here. In the figure, you are considering the output along the y-axis. This shows the output or production. Here x axis show grade of land and you can see that grade A land's output is given by the first rectangle here. This is what is given by the grade A's land output and out of which this 15 is the cost of production. 15 is the cost of production. So this rectangle is the cost of production this area and the remaining which is 50 minus 15 which is equal to 35 and this 35 would be the surplus so this is the surplus and that that is something which happens to the grade a land and this 35 will be going as rent now, coming to grade B land, here we could see that the total output is 35 and the total cost here of production is 15, the very same 15 and this that is 35 minus 20, 35, uh, sorry 35 minus 15. 35 minus 15 which would be equal to 20 this is the surplus or leg rent now coming to the grade C land which is indicated by this rectangle grade B's land is this rectangle uh, grade B's output is uh, grade B land's output is this rectangle and grade C's Output is this rectangle. Okay. After which the cost is indicated by this 15. The total production is 20. And what is this 5? 20, 20 minus 15. That is equal to this 5 which is a surplus or rent. Moving to the grey D land which is uh, here the production of output is indicated by this 15. And here there is no surplus or no rent. And for the very same reason, we call the grade D land as the no rain land or marginal land. This is how Ricardo was giving his theory and he says that 
uh, this rend is something that arises as a result of two reasons one is scarcity and the second thing is unequal fertility here grade a land is most fertile and grade d land is least fertile and that's all about the theory of rent by ricardo thank you for watching you can like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos you can also join our free telegram community for your doubt clearance i'll be providing the link of the same in the description box also you can download the learn economy app for which also i'll be providing the link in the description box thank you